well, as we celebrate the 4th of July, we celebrate freedom. And in the United States, actually, it's one of the countries that there's more freedom than in anywhere else in the world. But with that, freedom gives choices. There are countries that don't have the choices. There are countries who do what they say or else. But here, we have the freedom. But the word freedom also means choices. And the word choices also means consequences. I, we're gonna, they could be good consequences or they could be bad consequences, depending on the choices we make. If we decide to get on the freeway and go here or there, sober, it's good. But if we decide to drink and indulge, indulge ourselves in something we shouldn't, and then we get behind the wheel. There are consequences for that. Either in your life or you have caused consequences in someone else's life. There are also consequences in all that we do. Well, let's go. I figure we gotta go to the Bible because the Bible will direct our path. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to 2 Samuel chapter 11. And we're gonna talk about King David. If you know King David, he actually went out before he was king. He used to fight used to have an army. When he went out to conquer, he always won. That's why um, King Saul got a little upset with him. Actually, not upset, but jealous. Because King David was He would always come back and it would always be a good thing. But we're going to pick his life up in Second Samuel chapter 11, verse 1. And that's when King David sent his officers. He sent his officers to war and they went to go fight. But King David did not go. He decided to stay. He stood in Jerusalem. He remained in Jerusalem. And one of the evenings that King David was there, he went on the roof of the palace. I figure it was a very tall building. And from there, he could probably see a lot of things in his kingdom. But his eyes saw a woman baby. And the Bible says not only was she a woman, but she was a very beautiful woman. So King David sent someone to inquire about her. And they came back. They came back with the message. First place, David should have been out at war. But he decided not to go. That's one decision. The next decision is he went out at top of the roof, which is probably something he did all the time. But this time his eyes fastened on this and not only did they fasten on her, they, he also inquired about her. Now it's, it's going a little. He's walking. It's like having a railroad, and the railroad is going to split. It's, the train can go to the right or go to the left. So let's see which way he goes. Does he go to the left or does he go to the right? Right now he's inquiring about her. So to me, it sounds like, He's getting the idea of maybe I should go to the left and not to the right. So they come back with the information and, and say that he that she is the wife of Uriah. So 
Now David has a couple of things. David now knows that she's beautiful, but he also knows now that she is married. Let's go on as we go on to, to verse three and four. David sends messengers to get her. And when, and when she comes to him, she sleeps with her and she becomes pregnant. Okay, now he has actually gone to the left side. Because now he knew that she was married, number one. Number two, he kept on going on that wrong path. He kept on doing what he wasn't supposed to do. He brought her in and now he, he slept with her. As he slept with her, yes, she got hurt. Okay, so now we have we have this thing going. David sent for Uriah. Now, he sent for Uriah. Why did he send for Uriah? Maybe King David's gonna do right now, or is he gonna do wrong? Let's read a little bit further on that. And as we go to six, verse six to eleven, he sends for Uriah. And he tells Uriah that for him to go home and for him to take it easy. But Uriah wouldn't go. Uriah slept with the servants at the door. And he didn't go home. So when King David asked him, why, Uriah, why didn't you go home? And this, it sounds like Uriah is a very upright man because his answer was i think i would have went home i think i would have went home but anyway his answer was the ark israel and judah are dwelling in a tent and my master joab and his soldiers are camping out in the open field How can I enter my house and eat and drink and sleep with my wife? I surely, as you live and by my life, I will not do this. He had a chance. His, the king told him he could go home, but he had he felt and had loyalty for the ark or Israel, for the men that were fighting. He said, no, how can I go and eat and, and kick back in my house when the men are out there in the open field? He says, I can't, I can't do this. So the next morning, What is the king trying to do? That's my question. Remember, his wife is pregnant. He's trying to get her husband to get, get home, but he refuses, he won't. King David now is trying to cover up what he has done. Sometimes we make wrong choices. And sometimes continue to make wrong choices on top of it. That's like when you lie and you have to make another lie to cover that lie and you have to make another lie to cover that lie That and you make another lie to cover pretty soon you don't know where you started from the beginning. Well, this thing, it's, it's getting a little bit worse as we follow the story. As we follow the story, the next morning the king wrote a letter Okay, he wrote, the king wrote a letter and send it with Uriah. But on this, you can tell that Uriah didn't, didn't open the letter. He should have went back, but he didn't open the letter. He took the letter and in the letter, it, it said for him to go to send, for him to be sent to the front line. 
where the fighting was fierce. And then for the men to withdraw, and yes, he would be struck down. Did Uriah die? Yes, he did. He died, he died serving his king faithfully. So right here, King David is making choices and making more choices and making more choices. More choices. Yes, he's king. But even a king has God over him. Let's see what happens. However, the Lord considered what David had done to be evil. God saw what King David did. God saw what King David did. In this, we're going to see that God sees everything. God has mercy, but God will not accept or we have to reap the consequences of our decisions. In this story, there is a consequence. Actually, in every story, there's a consequence. But the one we chose is there's a consequence here. And now we're going to 2 Samuel, verse 12 to 14 to 15. And Nathan was sent to the king. And he told him a story or parable. There was a rich man and a poor man. And the rich man took from the poor man what he should have taken. And as they saw, as he, as the king, as King David heard the story, King David became fierce, angry. And he said that that man is, it didn't do right. But Nathan told him, who is that man? You're the man I'm talking about. You're the rich man that took from the poor man. It's you I'm talking about. King David responded to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. King David recognized what he did, recognized that he did wrong. He did do wrong. He did do wrong. And yes, we have done wrong. God knows. This shows you right here. That God knows. It was done, it was all done in secret. But God knows. So, if we do something in secret, it doesn't mean that God doesn't know. The people around us might not know, but God knows. Let's see if God sins. It says right there, he recognizes and he knows that he has sinned, he has done wrong against God. Then Nathan replies to King David. And the Lord has taken away your sins. You will not die. Okay. Right here, it tells us. It tells us very clearly that God forgave him. God forgave him for what he did. First, he took a wife that wasn't his. Then, she became pregnant. Then he wanted to cover up his sin, his wrongdoing. And then he couldn't do that. So he killed her. He didn't physically kill her. 
but you might, you might say he had objected, which is what happened. But let's see what the Lord says. God took away your sins, and you, King David, you're not going to die. So is he safe? You gotta go a little further down. That's my God. Is, is there a consequence to what he has done? Not. However, because he treated the Lord with such contempt in this matter, the son born to you. And Nathan went home. The, the son. So if you read the story a little bit more, you'll see that what King David did is once a baby was born, the baby got sick. He put on a sackcloth and he fasted and prayed. Maybe God will change his mind. Maybe God will change his mind. In some things, God won't change his mind. God won't. He died anyway. His servants even wonder what's going to happen if we tell him the baby died. What will happen? And what will happen is, what will happen is, is that, remember, he's fasting and he's on the ground with a sackcloth. If we tell him the baby dies, what is he going to do? It's going to be worse. No, he got up and he ate and he was fine. And they asked him, King David, why did you do this? And he said, I was hoping to change God's mind. God did not change his mind. Yes, they can see more children, but we have choices. This right here is a story of choices being made choices and choices and he went down the wrong the wrong road i call it the wrong alley you know but and yes there was a consequence the consequence to this was that his child died that's the negative part of consequences the death of this child. But there's also, when we make choices, we can also make good choices. And will good, good choices bring good consequences? Uh, let's find out. Maybe not, maybe so, but let's find out. For that one, we're going to go to Esther. We're going to go to Esther, and that's Esther chapter 2, verse 17. We're going to pick it up there. We'll go a little bit further. But Esther, if you, if you read the book of Esther, it's not a long book, but if you read the book of Esther, the king was there, and the king wanted the, king wanted the queen to come out and to present himself or to present her because she was so beautiful, but she refused. She didn't want to. Oh, actually, that has a consequence because she didn't come out when the king called her. She was no longer queen. They took away. So that's how, what, what happened there is that the king's advisors said, Let's look throughout the kingdom and all the virgins will come and then he can pick another queen. So King Esther went in and in this time, King Esther is a Jew, but she didn't tell nobody. She didn't tell anybody. She was, she was instructed not to say anything at this point. So, but King Esther was 
was very beautiful. She was pretty. And she found favor with the king. And she gained favor in the eyes of everyone who saw her. So it was time for her to go before the king in the palace. And, and the king loved Esther more than all the other women. She won the favor and appearance from him when did any more than any of the other virgins. So King King Esther, King Esther here is you could see she's starting to get favor. God is giving her favor. God right here is putting her in a position. Let's see what God does. But we can see what God is gonna do on this, but we can also see what choices Esther makes. Because remember, that's what, what we're doing today is making choices. We have the freedom to make choices every day, every day. There's so many choices that you have. Sometimes when there's a, you go to the, what is it? 31 flavors of, of ice cream. I can't tell which one to take, there's too many choices. Just give me chocolate, vanilla, and strawberry. I can make a choice out of that. I can make a better choice out of small choices than a bit huge. It's, it's very difficult for me anyway. But let's see what happens here. Let's see, because we want to follow this story a little bit on this. So she has favor. She has favor with anything, with everybody and, and her appearance. The king really likes her more than, than all the other, than all the other virgins. He placed the royal crown on her head and made her queen. So now, King Esther was not a queen, not born into that kind of family or anything, but she had found favor. God is putting her in a place. I know I saw the story quite this way, but it's good. Anyway, so let's see what's going on. So she becomes queen. Queen Esther is a Jew. Remember, we, we saw that, okay? But now, there's a man, this story right here. Okay? He wants to kill the Jews. Remember, the Jews are God's people. He wants to annihilate them. He wants to get rid of them. Isn't that something that's still going on today? But the enemy cannot, cannot prevail. But anyway, let's, let's go back to this. And, and her her uncle comes and tells her about this. She learns about what's going on, that there's a conspiracy and to kill the Jews, to annihilate them, to get rid of them. Okay, but Mordecai, uh, but anyway, her uncle, um, she finds out about what's going on on this and he tells her if you remain silent at this time relief and deliverance will arise from another place but you and your father's family. Now King Esther has to make a decision. Is she going to help in this problem? She is the queen. But if you read the story, she, even though she's a queen, she cannot come before the king without her being summoned. So what she tells all the people all the Jewish people to fast and to pray. Three days. No water, no food. And then she will see what she can do about the problem. As she recognizes what's going on. So they fast and she prays. And she tells all her, all her, her, 
people around her to do the same. And so they do. And she decides. So she decides to see what she's going to do about this, this problem. Because, and she's reminded, maybe for this reason, you were put here. Maybe for this reason, you were put here for such a time as this. And we still use that today. We still use that, that phrase today. It's, it's a, a very, because sometimes we're in a position where we wouldn't have been there unless God put us there. And maybe that's why we were put in this position. And who knows, but that you have come to this royal position for, for such a time as this. So what she did is she went to the court of the palace for us. And the king did let her come in and come before him. And then he said, I will give you anything that you want. You can see that the door is open just for the king to tell you. Up to half of my kingdom, I'll give you anything. She just won favor with him. What I like about this, though, is, is she doesn't, even though the door is open and she found favor for him just to say that, she doesn't jump into the pool yet. She's very cautious, she's very careful. She's very careful. And she says, well, if I have found favor in your eyes, and if the king please, you will come in. I have prepared a meal for you. You will come in. So he, he goes to go to eat. And the king asked her again. The king asked her, What is it that you want? What is your request? But King answered very calmly. Quietly. She doesn't jump into the pool yet. Not yet. He says, Again, King, if I have found favor with you, can you come to the banquet I have prepared for you again? And they go to the banquet. And it is there. Again, ask her, what is it? What is your request? I will give you anything. Not for my kingdom. I will give you anything. You can see that the king is really wanting to see what her request is, but is willing to give. You can see that she really found favor with him. And then she She's a Jew who wanted to serve her people, annihilate her people. And from this, the king allowed her people to be saved because of the decision that she made. She had a choice to go back to the story. She had a choice. She had a choice to see what she would do about this. She had a choice to pray and to fast. She had a choice to ask the king from the beginning. She had a choice to ask him the second, the first time he asked. She had a choice the second time. I miss right, she asked. And because of the choices that she made, carefully, not only one, was one life changed, not only was one, but 
my family safe, but the nation of Israel and her people were not destroyed. This is a story of the choices. This is a story of somebody walking. I never saw it quite this way. But this is a story of somebody walking very slowly under that thing. Very slowly. She wasn't willing to jump into the water at the beginning. She went very slowly. She said, if I perish, I perish. But no, she didn't perish. But either did Israel. So, this was actually very good. So, in all this, we have to understand. It's important for us to understand that we have choices every day. The choices we make. We are free here. In this country that we live in, we are free. Will we choose God? Or we will not. We actually, the world in itself, has sin. And it's a sin that no one in this world could take. No one. There isn't anybody in this world that could take it for the sin that we all carry. So God, in his love, paid that debt for us by sending his son. We have the freedom to accept him. That freedom is given to each and every one of us. And that's something that God won't violate. The choice. So, yes, our choices affect us, but also affect the people around us. So, what we're going to do is we're going to pray. We're going to pray that God will help us to make good choices for ourselves, but also for those around us. Because we need to make good choices. Good choices make good consequences. Bad choices, sorry, make bad consequences. Just the way it is. If you plant a seed that is good, it will produce good fruit. If you plant a seed that is bad, it will produce bad fruit. The two cannot change. Cannot. So we got to make good choices. I just came back from a conference and I learned. I just didn't get the name of the country. But there's a country. I got to look it up. I didn't have time. Uh, but there's a country that you cannot tell a child about God or you will go to jail. You cannot. You cannot. But here we can. I know because I, I do Sunday school on the streets. We have that freedom. There's so much freedom we have here. But Lord, help us to make good choices. Because sometimes the choices we make are not good. Father God, Father God, help us, Father God. Lord, help us, Lord God, to make good choices, Lord God. Freedom, Lord God, brings, Lord God. Freedom brings. Freedom. Freedom brings consequences. Help us, Father God, to make good choices, Father God. We could have, we could have good consequences, Lord God. Lord God, for ourselves and for those around us, Lord God. 
Lord, we give you glory and we give you praise, Father God, for what you're doing, Lord God, this very day, Lord God. And every day we wake up, Lord, we have choices to make. Help us as the choices come towards us to make good ones, Lord God, all the days of our life. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>